Hello everybody, welcome again to the Big Cat Sanctuary on a glorious day. It's sunny, a little bit wet and soggy after all the rain and the snow that's disappeared. But here we are again at the Big Cat Sanctuary coming live to you on Facebook. We've got the wonderful Becky again hello. with us. Hi Becky, and of course Harry behind the camera. Say hello Harry. Good morning everyone. Hey, excellent. So today we've got a treat for you. We are going to visit all of the sisters and the brothers that we have here at the sanctuary who all actually conveniently live in a line across the back of the sanctuary here. So we're going to see our Puma girls, Victoria Valentina. We're going to see the Cheetah boys after that and then go and see the Lion sisters and then end up at the end of this. Uh, we're going to have a training session yep. with Ngozi, the male lion, which is going to be fabulous. So stick around for that. It's going to be a real treat at the end of this one. But we'll kick off at the moment, first of all, with a big thank you to everybody that has supported the Cat Care Gift campaign. Um, it's been amazing, fantastic. You guys have been so supportive and generous. Um, it's, it's still going. Obviously, we've had that, that news that we're going to stay closed for a little bit longer. Who knows how much longer? Uh, as soon as we know, we'll let you know. Um, so it really is a real boost to our coffers uh, to help us continue to care for all of these brothers and sisters that we have here. Uh, so thank you very much indeed for your support. But now, let's go and see some cats, yeah. shall we? So we'll look through the window here. Who have we got first, Becky? So over here, we have our Puma sisters, uh, Valentina and Victoria. I think Victoria's kept herself inside this morning. I don't blame her, so it's a little bit windy. But that's Valentina sitting over there. Um, she's the more dominant of the two sisters. You can tell this is Valentina because her left ear has a, a slight little cut in it. Um, missing the top which gives her a very kind of vicious attitude -y, thuggy type look which suits her personality an awful lot um these two are both 13 years old um they came to us from croatia um a zoo over in croatia and they've been with us ever since they were young um often people think that pumas or otherwise known as mountain lions cougars uh, catamounts screamers all sorts of things um, they often think that these might live alone in the wild, um, but it's actually been shown on camera traps that especially female uh, pumas are far more social than was once thought. Um, often mothers and daughters will stay together for at least two or three years whilst the, um, the, the young kind of learn how to hunt for themselves and live more independently. Um, and it's also been shown that if a female puma takes down a really big kill, um, they'll actually be more willing to share it with the other females that live in the territories around them um, than was once thought because obviously they don't want meat to go to waste. They know that they might not necessarily finish it all themselves. So actually there is a bit more of a social life than, than we once thought. So that's um, interesting, Becky, isn't it? Because we, we mainly talk about the, you know, the lion being the only sort of truly social cat that you, know, mm -hmm. you live in a pride and you have the males and the ladies living together. Yeah. But uh, So that's, that's something that's different with pumas. And... We're going back to see some yep. cheetahs now. So is that the same for those guys also? Yep, they don't necessarily form what we would call a pride. The pride is very distinctive to lions, um, especially having a mixed pride with females and males. As I say, the female pumas will normally stick together a little bit more, but again, not in a pride. Um, but the males, it's always, sorry, the cheetahs, it's always the males. Um, we would only find females with another cheetah during mating, or again, if they have their young with them um, for approximately two years. But normally it will just be a female by herself and then males will form what we call a coalition. Um, this will usually be related males from the same litter, but often it has been found that an unrelated male may join the coalition as well. Okay, we're just going past Jack here, uh, Harry. He's uh, popped his head out to see uh, what's going on and why he's involved today. So uh, just give the viewers at home a little, a little Jack moment. And <laughs> a bit camera shy. A bit camera shy. He's just, he's just fed up that he's, uh, he's not involved in the, in the Facebook yeah, life. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, great. So it's not necessarily sort of related, but we have got two related cheetahs boys here. Yeah, the possibly and as well. They do have heaters in their bedroom. Being slightly older cats at 10 years old, we like them, we want to keep them comfortable and warm in the winter. So they do have some heaters in here. Um, so they may be, well be keeping themselves inside. Let's see if Let's we can have a look, look inside, see if they're there. Mm, no. no. The elusive cheetah. Yeah. With obviously the sad passing of Martin, we have given um, Barani an extension of his enclosure. So he now lives across the two enclosures. So actually you can see Barami on the back in the cave there. That's him exploring okay. the new parts of his enclosure. And then we have Keen at the front here, um, who was obviously living with, with Martin. And that is what we can call a coalition. So Martin and Keen living together as one. 
Um, and that's basically to strengthen their hunting skills because cheetahs are far weaker than say lions um, and leopards and they have a different tactic to their killing in terms of a, they run after it and they'll use their dew claw which is a little claw on the side of their foot to trip their prey and then jump on it rather than having the strength to fully pull them down. Um, them living together just means that they can hunt a lot better and be more successful in the amount of kills that they do. Um, but obviously, you know, without Martin, you know, everyone, everyone's really sad to hear that news, obviously. But, uh, but Keen here is actually sort of, you know, you say they're better together, but at least robust enough, he's okay. Absolutely, I mean, happy, still a happy boy. Yeah, coalitions aren't um, a case for every single male. Um, there are males that live by themselves, and if for whatever reason some like a member of their coalition passes or something happens to them they're very very adaptable to suddenly switch because they have to be especially living in the wild they, they don't have kind of the time to um, make a slow adjustment they just have to kind of get used to it and Martin especially having Barami still living next door to him we won't mix them because obviously they've had several years of living apart but just have them having each other next door um, is good enough for, for Keen just to be able to adjust and get used to life by himself um, and I think the bachelor life is suited quite well. You can see he's quite comfortable up there on his cave. Um, he's still out in the open, he's not hiding away from us. So he's, he's adjusted to it really, really well. Um, and it means he gets more food to himself, to be fair. There you go, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Brother just walking past us on the back. These guys are obviously still riding high on the DF Petita cars and hopefully those guys will be racing very soon. Yeah. Um, there is a race supposed to be at the end of February, but like everybody else, we are waiting to see whether or not all of that's going to take place. But they're, they're still riding high up on those cars and uh, supporting us and uh, hopefully raising a good bit amount of cash this year for us. So, all good. So, boys, we have seen girls over there. Now we've got a big gaggle of sisters and a mum uh, that we're heading towards now. So, maybe tell the folks where we're going to. Yeah, so we are heading to the White Lion Pride now. Um, all of us keepers have a cat that we will train. Um, these training sessions are they're good enrichment for the cats. They keep them stimulated. They got food out of it. So a lot of them very much enjoy it and they're really up for it. And it means that we can do basic health checks um, without the need for sedation. So we can, for example, bring them up onto their hind legs. That gives us a good look at their chest and their forepaws when they're splayed over. Uh, we can train them to kind of open their mouths a little bit and hold it open so we can get a good look at their dental work that's going on. Um, and also with the older cats, it also means that they're just kind of encouraging that movement in their back leg. Um, my aim with Ngozi, we've only been training together for about two months. Um, so I'm still learning how he learns and he's still kind of getting the hang of training. Um, but the hope is to get him lying parallel to the mesh. I can then start pinching his hip and that will simulate an injection um, and through that I'll be able to give him hopefully his vaccine by hand rather than via a dart gun um, so it just makes it a far more pleasant experience for him um, he doesn't have to go through the trauma of the vet coming and the dart gun um, which can be a little bit stressful um, and it just also means that he's got a bond with at least one of the keepers here um, which is really really nice and as I say he's so food orientated that he absolutely loves it so we'll hopefully have a good show for you in a second Good, good. We're heading down. We're looking at the girls. They're not around. So all your care cat packages have been good. So their warm beds and their straw that they've had indoors, they're making good use of it, I think, inside. Yeah. We still need a few more heaters and things to come through and uh, keep them going. But they are enjoying the comforts that you have sent them, including our interns, actually, by the way. So yeah. a big thank you for those guys who did actually send a care package for the interns. Uh, chocolate, uh, hot chocolate and chocolate biscuits. lots of chocolate, hot chocolate, lots of chocolate digestives, um, <laughs> marshmallow cupcakes. So thank you very much for that. That was very much appreciated. Um, and that keeps us stocked up on hot chocolate for a good couple of months. So we're very, very happy interns. Thank you. Yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. We've just got a few shivering keepers, uh, you know, over there that are sort of, sort of saying, where's, where's ours? We're cold too. No, they're fine. Um, so we're going to go indoors by the looks of it because the girls are inside. Yeah. So you'll get a nice close of probably a whole lot of girls cuddling up and keeping warm indoors so and as we go through we're chatting here Bex is going to be opening gates and things like that as we go through here um so the cat care package has gone out it's been fantastic we have got hopefully coming out very soon in february another competition to run ladies and gents so uh yeah we're going to give you guys a chance to come here and actually be a little bit like this uh be involved in the filming um, when we reopen, we obviously need to advertise all of our experiences, lodge stays, 
big cat encounters, all of that stuff that we uh, that we use for the social enterprise model to keep ourselves running. Um, so Harry, behind here, needs to film some more of those experiences. So uh, yeah, we're going to run a competition for you guys to be involved in that. Come here and basically do all the experiences that we have here at the Big Kang Sanctuary. And uh, you could be there with a friend and then be involved in that and uh, get on to our latest promo. So yeah, we'll be running that from sort of February onwards, uh, your chance to enter and win a fantastic prize and obviously help us raise money at the same time. So, which we very much need at the moment. So, Becky, yeah. we, doors are open. We Let's go and in, see some girls. Here they are. <laughs> So it can get a little bit noisy in here with them. So over here, we have the uh, four females at the moment. So one of them was outside. Oh no, their head's down the bottom now, I've just spotted them. So we've got the five females in here. Um, this includes Joy, who is our 13 year old uh, mum. She's down at the back with her head on the, on the back there. Um, her and her sister Sophia came to us from a zoo over in South Africa um, and they, uh, seven years ago, mated with a male called Femba. Um, Joy gave birth to Ngozi and Amara at the side there and also Jaziri and Nuru. And then the sister Sophia gave birth to Sabi and Shaka uh, and they're all seven years old. So we have um, Ngozi and Amara living separately because um, obviously, as I said, the father Femba was living with them. Um, normally males would live in the wild with the pride until about two to three years but Femba actually started pushing Ngozi out when he was about 10 months old which is actually quite young so he separated him along with his favourite sister Amara um, and they now kind of live as a little mini pride of their own and the rest of them stay together. Um, obviously Femba then passed away um, and the females adjusted to having no male around but we actually decided to move Manzi over who was obviously the third brother of Tiny and Kafara. Um, he moved over in about uh, 2016 and it took about a year to fully integrate him with the Pride before we were able to leave them overnight living as one big Pride. Um, and he lived that way until last year and it was actually sadly a year ago yesterday that we lost Manzi. Um, so these girls have been by themselves for a year now. Again, have fully adjusted to being like that. Females are very, very strong, um, especially being a Pride unit. They can solidify themselves really, really well, and just keep that strength going. So they don't need a male around. Um, obviously we do have Tiny living by himself now, he is a 17 year old um, male and many of these females are 7 um, so we wouldn't look at introducing Tiny to this pride simply because as I say it took a year for Manzi to be introduced um, that's a long time for a 17 year old male lion to try and fit in with some very young very feisty females um, and actually he's been a bachelor all his life and he lived in a male coalition um, as we were talking about. So for him to suddenly come and have to live with five females would actually probably be quite a stressful experience for them. He wouldn't necessarily know how to manage the pride of females um, and be at the top. Manzi adjusted to it very, very well, but he, again, he had a different personality to Tiny. Um, so he was seen to be more suited to it. So Tiny is just happy by himself at the moment um, and he'll live over there as a little bachelor now, enjoying that life. Yeah, it's uh, really, really difficult to believe that was a whole, whole year since we lost Manzi and obviously Kafara going just so, just so shortly. Uh, but these girls are robust as well, aren't they? So that in terms of, um, we'll leave that for a second, if you're alive. Trains don't bother these girls, by the way. No, not at all. Not, no. not, not a fuss. But, um, so, so even without the male here, but is there a pecking order? Do you have to feed these guys slightly differently than you would do yeah, some of the other Yeah, there guys? is absolutely still a pecking order. Um, and it's something that changes frequently. Um, so Joy and Shaka, they're both on slightly different weights um, to the other girls. Joy because she's slightly older, Shaka just because she's far more well built and is actually carrying herself a lot higher. So they actually have a slightly smaller meal than the rest of them. So they were all fed yesterday. Joy and Shaka feed separately and have a smaller meal as I say. The three other girls, Jaziri, Nuru and Sabi, will all go out into the paddock. Um, we'll just put the food out there and it's a free for all which piece they get because they're all on very similar weights. Um, Ngozi and Amara also feed separately because obviously Ngozi being a male is far more dominant. He technically has rights to the food um, before Amara does. So we feed them separately just so she gets her share as well. Um, so she had about a seven uh, kilo piece of leg yesterday of horse meat and Ngozi had about a 13 and a half kilo um, feast yesterday. But don't worry, he will still be very up for his training. Um, he is very interested in food. 
um, and he goes for it very, very easily. So that kept them going yesterday, so it's no surprise that they're all here, chilled. lying very comfortably and chilled at the moment, um, yeah. because they gorge eat on a very big meal, and then we'll spend a day or two just chilling out and relaxing and digesting it all before the next big feast. Fabulous. Well, then, let's not let... Without further ado, let's uh, go out and give uh, Ngozi his training session, shall we? I think they're ready for it. <laughs> the girl's giving him a little shout. Becky's now going to tempt him out with some food and a so little call. While we're waiting, James, I think it'd be quite nice just to give people an update on what's, what's been happening this week at the Sanctuary. So, a lot's happening here at the Sanctuary during this week. So, we are carrying on with some building works. You can see some of the stuff behind the tigers over there. As Harry swings around, you can just see as we're finishing off the extension off the back there. So, that, that's, that's a lot of work happening. And we're also still doing some work over where the small cat area was that we showed you last week. But also inside, um, if you've been and stayed on a lodge stay uh, in Heritage Lodge, where you'll have all your breakfast and afternoon teas and evening meals overlooking uh, Lion Boys, um, obviously Tiny's still there, um, but we're, we're actually sort of extending that area up, making it a bit more COVID friendly um, so that we can open as soon as possible and get you guys in. So the guys are painting and decorating inside there as well so yeah we're carrying on doing what we can do whilst we don't have any guests here and it's a little bit quieter so uh hopefully ready to open up as soon as possible and let you guys back in to see meet these fabulous cats like the ones we're going to here we go so this is uh something becky that you've been doing for how long within goes now uh about two months two months two okay months. so he's picked it up quite quickly you think absolutely so what I do um, is create the bridge with him. So when he does the um, when he does the action that I want him to do, which is following the target and touching it with his nose, I then give a whistle so it shows that he's done the desired behaviour that I want, and then he gets a meat treat from me. Um, so what I'll be trying to do um, is getting him to lie down. This is the behaviour we're working on at the moment. Um, he hasn't fully picked it up, but we're doing it in stages. Um, so you'll see me whistling when he's not necessarily lying on the ground, but I'm just rewarding him for doing a down motion um, and we'll do it all in stages. Um, it gets him a little bit confused. He might sometimes pour at the, um, at the target because he's not quite understanding yet what he wants of him. Um, but he's a very intelligent cat and like I say, he's picked this up really, really well and he's really interested in it. Um, so it, I think he's going to be a quick learner, but we'll see how it goes. Let's see how it reacts. Can tell that he's actually thinking he's looking at his name mm -hmm. that the, the, the red thing is the thing that he has to go and look at and touch but it's getting the lying down Again, like I say, for the guys at home, this is this is really positive for, for him. It's really sort of like aimed at one us, obviously. We can see the full height of an amazing line as he gets up there. You, you, obviously, you can health check him a little bit while you're doing that, but the whole aim really is to make everything less stressful for him when there's procedures and things happening, right? We'll work as well on um, getting him to hold that position just a little bit longer, so about five seconds or so, um, just so I get a good look rather than the quick one. Um, but with Ngozi, I found that it's better just to teach him one thing at a time rather than trying to teach him multiple things. Because um, as you can see, he's still learning to pick it up at the bottom now. 
The lure of meat. <laughs> we'll get him there eventually, we think, so. So this is, it, you can do this with Ingoes, right? Um, if you try this with his sister, you'd probably get him interfering, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, so that, that pecking order between like you were talking about before, he is in charge, so getting him to do this, amazing. Yeah, if his sister was out and you were giving her meat and he'd, be, he'd just be bullying her and yeah. sort of coming in and going, yeah. get out of the way. It's the very thing. first time we did it, neither of them were sure what was going on, so Amara did come over to explore. But as soon as Ngozi realised there was food involved, um, he gave her a little smack, which is very, <laughs> very standard in lion behaviour. That's just a signal for, go away, this is mine. Um, and since then, she hasn't even bothered coming over. Um, as you can see, she's still indoors. She hasn't even attempted to come out. Yeah. So when this target is here, um, I think they both have learned that it's for Ngozi and it's not for her. Um, if we're successful with Ngozi, there's nothing to say we can't try it with Amara, um, but we would have to shut Ngozi in the house just to make sure that he couldn't come out and get involved. Um, but one of the other trainers, Hannah, um, does this training with Joy, the mother of the other part. Um, so yeah, there's nothing to stop us doing it with any of them. Ngozi, come back. Good boy. He thought it was good over. So it good. isn't. <laughs> good boy. Hello. We'll try again. Let's Hello. see. sure that he is touching the target every time so as you can see then he went up but he didn't actually touch the target so i didn't reward him for that one yeah and that's not being cruel is it that's just that literally is the training process yeah. because they, they will learn they're very intelligent and they will yeah. learn how that works so. okay. Okay. here we go Is there a jackpot at the end of this? Yeah. Him, the same as everyone else. So once he uh, gets to the end, ladies and gents, then he does get a, a, an extra, an extra large piece, a little jackpot for him to reward the fact that he's gone through all of this training, shown us his underbelly, shown us his size, and his intelligence. Well done, he goes. Good boy. Good boy. 
Amazing. Thank you so much, Becky. Thank you. For your stat, and thank you, Gozi, for being a good boy. <laughs> So you we'll can get see, him. yeah, he we'll just get... needs to get his bum down, that's it. That's it. We'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. He was close, but he, he knows he can see, again, he's not, he's not silly, he knows he can get a treat by touching it at the yeah. bottom, so he's just, uh, he'll learn, he'll learn as we go along. But thank you so much, Bex, for, for showing us that, and goes for giving us there, seeing all the brothers and sisters here at the Big Cat Sanctuary, ladies and gents. Hope you've enjoyed that, it was fantastic for us here. Uh, thank you again for all your support. Um, we will be back again next week with another live. Um, we'll let you know when that is and what we're going to do next week. But for now, from Harry, from Becky, from the wonderful Ngozi and all the cats here, goodbye, stay safe, and we'll see you hopefully here again soon sometime in the future. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay.